three, two, one. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Weapons of Mass Discussion podcast. Glenn Snyder here, and on the phone with me today, Dr. Corbett Everidge. This is our end of the year broadcast. This right here puts us at exactly one year since we started started all this. And it's been a heck of a learning experience, don't you think? Yeah, 2020 vision. I mean, and looking back, you know, with 2020, yeah, this year's uh, it's been a learning experience, and also it sucked. <laughs> it sucked. We've learned all kinds of things this year, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't bad. I mean, you know, in the big scheme of things, uh, I actually had a pretty good year. I actually did too. You know, I it's mean, not been uh, disgruntled with some of the shit that's been going on, but as far as personally, everything, you know, I actually accomplished quite a few things this year. So, well, you know, I did too. You know, I mean, it was a. Uh, you no, know, the social distance, and you know, I'm uh, to me, it was a blessing in disguise. Oh, yeah, and uh, you know, but I'm you know, whatever, man. I mean, you know, I, I really, you know, I, I got a lot accomplished, uh, and you know, with you know, you know, if people will stop and think about it, Glenn, if you use the time wisely, well, it was just like we were teaching, you know, when we started back. We, you know, when people started coming back to our, our training sessions, mm-hmm. you know, how many have you been working out? And none. <laughs> none. Well, <laughs> if you were smart, you used that time. That's right. And, you know, if you were smart, you know, you used to get closer to your family and, 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 and your friends and uh, and rediscover, a, you know, parts of your life that you, you probably have been overlooking. Yep. And, uh, you know, and... I had a lot of good stuff happen to me this year, you know, and, and, you know, in my church, I was ordained to the priesthood in my, in my church in July, on July 16th, as a matter of fact. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, wow. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Pre- you know Preacher I mean, average? Yeah, you somebody, you know, put, you know, put Kool-Aid in the holy water or something. I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but, but it, it, it's been a good year, and. You know, my son, we started homeschooling him. and That was a big one. And, and, you know, to see him progress the way he has, you know, academically, and, I mean, he's he's actually, you know, starting to become more of a, man, I hate to say this, but he, he's he actually started making that transition into a man. I mean, yeah. um, you know, but, I, I mean, you've talked about this, and I think, you know, I think we're, People have missed a major. If you missed this, it was an, if you missed this opportunity, then you know I hope you don't get a second chance. And I, I don't mean that caustically, but uh, I actually had did not have a bad year this year. And um, you started out behind the eight ball because you started out the year, uh, you know, following up a surgery and having to heal from well, that. Well, that's what was so interesting about it. I mean, I was I was it was funny because I was actually thinking about that the other day. I was talking to a, you know, a guy that I used to work with uh, about these vaccines mm-hmm. and he told me and he said you know I, there may be a point that he has to get it to keep his job because yeah. he works in a healthcare facility yeah and um but this time last year you know, I, was, I was recuperating for surgery and I was out for three months and then and, and literally that in March was when all 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 this hell broke loose mm-hmm but I guess it was kind of funny because I was prepared for it because I was stuck in a house for three months. I couldn't do anything. Yeah. You know, it was, I was able to, after about the first month to get out and run. And, you know, if any of you out there has ever had hernia surgery, uh, you know what I'm talking about. It's one of those things, you know, where you don't feel that bad, but when you do something stupid, you, you quickly realize that you've done something stupid. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. You know, I was like, I went to the doctor, you know, and well, the, his physician's assistant, this woman, you know, I had a double hernia and they removed a, a lymph node that had gotten enlarged. And she examined me and I said, okay, can I do this? Can I run? She said, yeah, we want you to start doing light jobs. Okay, I'm on board with that. Can I do martial arts? She said, you can work on your kata. She said, no contact and no heavy breathing. Okay. Okay. Can I play golf? Oh, hell no. And that's exactly what she said. <laughs> I'm like, so I can run up and down the road. I, I can lift up to 20 pounds and I can do 
you know, I, I can work on that haunch in the yard, but she won't let me. She said, not that twisting motion. That's too she much torquing on the body, buddy. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but, but, you know, what's weird is I actually am in more pain now than I, I, when I had the hernia, it didn't hurt at all. Yeah. But they put those giant pieces of mesh in my stomach because I had a hernia right behind my, my, my navel, my belly button. And then the other one, the hernia was literally right on top of a scar, a surgical scar. And I, I've, I can bend down some now and it's like, Oh yeah, that shouldn't have done that. But, but I, I've had a good year. I've, I've, we've really, you know, as far as now me and you've kind of took it in the chili as far as our business. Yeah. It, uh, it, it, uh, didn't pan out well for the, uh, the class time this year. I mean, we, we were fortunate that, you know, I guess late August, um, we were able to get uh, a small group of our, our, our team together and, and, and get worked out for a while. Uh, it worked out good for a while. Um, you know, then, you know, things scheduling started changing and stuff like that, you know, so it, it worked out for a little bit. Uh, you know, everybody's interest was still there. So that was good. Um, you know, we actually had some other stuff scheduled for <laughs> end of the year, but, uh, that got, got hosed up because of, you know, some of the coronavirus restrictions and things like that so hopefully uh we get past uh the new year uh we can get everything kind of back on track again and get stuff you know rescheduled on the calendar but you know and that, it, you notice we're kind of going through things for this year and, and he and i were talking and he wanted to uh sort of go with this podcast you know in honor of festivus <laughs> the seinfeld reference to you know the holidays uh you know we were just kind of you know air i guess you know accomplishments and grievances you know things there, that, there you know grievances there you go just air those grievances you know for uh you know what we've kind of been confronted with accomplished thought about this past year um you know, from from a from the podcast standpoint, you know, we we kind of jumped in 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 the deep end of the pool and learned to swim real quick. And we've been learning. You know, every time we do this, we we, we learn. We feel like we get more fluid with it. We get a little bit better at what we can what we do. Uh, in our mind, you know, um, and it, it's been a, it's been a fun experience. I've enjoyed the hell out of it. I'm going to tell you, and Glenn, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm on everybody out there listening. I want to I want to offer you a challenge. I have a far, far greater respect and a, and a, and a new respect for people that go on like even YouTube and do like just an individual uh, vlog. Cause you know, friend, this ain't easy. You know, even sitting here, me and you, like we're talking to each other, but I mean, we're sitting here talking to, you know, God knows how many people. Right. Um, but if you really want to, you know, test how, you know, and just literally for the first few times you do it, make a fool out of yourself. <laughs> Try talking to your cell phone with it recording. <clears throat> right. And it's not easy, man. And I mean, I'm, I guess in 2020, I agree with you that that was one of the biggest things as far as a, a learning experience that I'm grateful for because it's something, it forced me out of my comfort zone. I mean, I think with you, because of the DJ stuff you do, yeah, it was... You know, from, from just me looking at you, it was not, I don't think it was that big of a deal for you because you were already used to that. Yeah, I, I have no problem getting in front of a whole lot of people and speaking. Oh, I, trust me, I've seen it, you know. Or seeing especially, it. Oh. You know, especially what you did to me at my wedding. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, yeah, that's, I don't know. We'll, we'll go, folks, we'll go over that one next year. I mean, matter of fact, April, while in my anniversary month, I'll, 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 I'll let you know what Glenn did to me. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I think, you know, from what research I've done, you know, Facebook, you know, you know that, that, that's just, uh, anyway, I'm not going to go into well, that. It, it, uh, even take the research aside, our experience with uh, it was just not, it just was useless. Um, really, any I social just enjoy media, doing it. You enjoy doing it, but I mean, from a, from a, a, let's get people uh, up to the table or into the door standpoint, it was useless for us. It really, you know, as far as an advertising tool, which is not, it didn't reap any benefit. Well, see, I think, you know, and you, you, you bring up another good point. You want to roll tonight? I like it. Um, this is for me. I'm not speaking for you, but as far as I'm concerned, the best part about this in 2020, just doing the YouTube and, and the podcast, 
and I think this bleeds over into every part of your life. If you're mar- if, if you're a martial artist in your training, if you're, you know, whatever your job is, I think people get too hung up on the results more than they do the process. Hmm. And you miss so much. Yeah. Especially in martial arts. I mean, how many times have we talked about the issues? So I may get a black belt and never see them again. Yeah. You're, you're, you're missing the whole point. Yeah. Cause that's when you, you, you that's when the, the doors are supposed to open and you really get to see the good stuff. You know, it's like, you know, you, you, it'd be like, you know, for you guys out there, you marry some hot, you know, blonde bombshell and like, I can't wait that she's 80 years old, gray and in a wheelchair. <laughs> well, no, no right guy in her mind. You, you basically missed the ride. Yeah, uh, you, yeah, you don't yeah, pay yeah, attention yeah, to the ride. Yeah, literally, literally and figuratively. Yeah. But, uh, looking to the end of the line. Yeah. That, yeah that's so, exactly right. You know, so that, that's just complete, you know, nonsense. I mean, nobody in their right mind would do that. Right. You know, when you start, fo- and I promise you all this, because I've learned this the hard way, because I've had, prior to this, I think I told you I had, what, two businesses fail? Mm-hmm. When you start focusing on money as the end result, it's just a matter of time before you're going, you're, you're going to circle the drain. I promise you that. Yeah. And I think, just from a philosophical perspective, friends, that if you focus more on doing a good job if you focus more on, on enjoying what you're doing the the, the end result's going to take care of itself i agree i agree 100 percent. but you know the podcast has been it's it's been great because you know it, it's given it's really good for me because you know you have ideas and thoughts in your head and you know and, and when we get in here we actually sit and discuss things it, it, you get the opportunity to one just say it out loud but it gives that kind of back and forth conversation between us. Uh, and it also allows people out there to comment and bring stuff to the table and, you know, you know, have all, and it opens up conversations with other people. So it's, it's been great, man. I have really enjoyed doing this this year. And if you think about it, when we've, this is podcast number 52. Is it? This is, this is, uh, this is a WMD podcast 52. You know, we've done 52, this will be 52 podcasts. We've done, I think, 26 or 27 vlogs. Uh, we've done roughly a dozen or so um, um, gear reviews. I mean, we, you know, we have really worked hard. Now, we're not putting stuff up every day, but, you know, we're not doing, you know, one or two minute little things every day. I mean, we're at, when we when we put together content, it's it, it's a full full 45 minutes to an hour worth of content. You know, we take we record it. We put it together, post, you know, produce it, and then put it out on the, you know, put it out there. Um, you know, we've really put out, a, I mean, in my mind, uh, a lot of useful content. I mean, a lot of guys, will, they'll put out stuff, and it'll be like little teasers, it'll be little things here and there, but you don't really get nothing from it. You know, it's just more like an advertisement. Maybe maybe that's something we need to look at doing. I don't well, know. Well, I don't, I mean, my, my position on that is, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I look at, I try to, when we doing this, I, I, I try to look at it like, because I'm, I'm a huge, huge user of YouTube. Oh, me too. Yeah, I love it. And you know, I've, I do. I'm, I do use other platforms as well on video. And I mean, cause pretty much online, what I do is I is, is read blogs and I look at look at videos. You know, and I try to look at it like as a person who looks at this stuff constantly. What would I want to see? Yeah. And that varies. I mean, there's sometimes I if I it depends on what I'm looking for. There's times I want to look at a, you know, like say if I'm if I'm there's something that I'm stumped on a firearm about. Yeah. How do I take this off? I want about a two to three minute video. Right. You know, I I don't want to see you getting it out of the truck and you know carrying it across through the woods and to your garage <laughs> is 18 miles from your house. Yeah. How do you take this piece off? That's what yeah. I'm after. But then there's other times that you, that I'm looking for something, you know, whether it be entertaining or ed- educational. Yeah. A 35 to 40 minute video, like you know, for example, I'm I'm gonna throw a plug out here for you martial artists out there. If you're not watching Karate Combat that was airing live on YouTube's on on Sunday night, you're missing the boat. You're missing the boat, man, because those was that was some fantastic uh, competitions. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm a combat sports guy you know, we've both competed, uh, but they, 
but the karate combat they've got their own you know check those guys out because it is fantastic if you're a karate man uh, it, it will re it will reignite your passion for 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 kumite trust me nice yeah you know i, I agree too I, and what we we have found we try to do when we do our gear review stuff it's short you know it's 10 15 minutes long uh just something quick and i think and that's that seemed to have set a spark off when we started doing that later in the latter part of the year uh, we saw a whole different change in our in our statistics, and so uh, you know I, I, there are a lot of people out there that like seeing that type of content. And I hope you know going into twenty twenty one, that's our we, we've already been having these discussions, and that's sort of our plan going into twenty twenty one to uh, you know to maybe add a bunch more of that type of content. You know, well, in, in addition of, to what we've been doing, absolutely twenty twenty one. I I'm, I haven't even told you this, but I'll I'll go ahead and tell you along with everybody else's. You know, I've already been doing research on, on what we can go forward with and two things. I've got enough content now for the next five years. I like it. And I was listening to a podcast this morning on the way, you know, on the way into work. And I was listening to this guy. He was an MMA fighter, but he's also huge in firearms. And he made a very, very interesting point that I think what we're going to do is we're going to probably talk about this more in, in, in the coming weeks. You know, it doesn't matter if you're talking about a gun fight, fist fight, you know, karate fight, kung fu fight, or pillow fight. There's one common denominator among all of them. It's a fight. It's a fight. <laughs> well, he was talking like about how he used a lot of his martial arts principles and philosophies and even the, the, the body movement. And he was involved in some kind of a, it was a shot show. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it was this year, last year, year before, but he was at shot show out in Vegas. And... There was a, it was, you either, they used same munitions mm -hmm. and, you know, of course it was a, you know, center mass or a head shot and then, or either you had to knock the person out or choke them out. That was the three ways you could win. Mm. I like it. And this guy has never served a day in the military and he beat some guys out of spec ops. Wow. But he was able to use what he knew as a martial artist to translate that because if you stop and think about this, it makes perfect sense because, you know, and this is no disrespect to any of those guys in the military I, because, you know, as being a former member of the military, you're, it's a team concept. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily adopt that mindset as a martial artist. That's right. You know, you're doing this as a solo project. And if, 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 if it's something that you have to do, in defense of your well-being or your life it's on you right and it's a it's a completely different mindset you know so i i found that interesting and i will i'm going to explore that more and i think we'll, we'll you know you know when next time you and i get together and, you know have one of our uh business suppers we'll talk about this <laughs> i like it i like it but yeah it's it's been it's been great man you know um, it's also give I think it, it, it gives a lot of time too, you know, to have uh, deeper discussions on how we want to handle you know, our actual you know, teaching portion of things, you know, that we do with you know, in physical in, in person teaching. So you know, the, the year, as much as I bitched about the Corona and, you know, all the, the stuff going on around us and everything this year, um, from a personal standpoint, the year actually turned out pretty well for me. Uh, uh, I, I, I honestly, so I can't. I, I'm. I, I can't really. I can't complain about the way that life has turned out for me to this point. <laughs> so you know, um, uh, I have grievances, but uh, uh, from from a just a personal standpoint, you know, things have actually went pretty good. You know, um, in my, my my day to day life, uh, when all this stuff got started, I had the opportunity to um, step up, and because of what I do, you know, in my day my day life, uh, produce a whole lot of. Uh, a PPE for medical professionals and hospitals and, you know, uh, first responder people that, that just couldn't get it at the time, you know, because everything was being made in China. And, of course, you know, they couldn't get anything here from China, so we didn't have anything. Um, and I'm fortunate enough uh, to be able to have access and was able to, to work alongside um, uh, others to, to produce stuff for, for those people. So, um, you know, that was, that was a, a really good experience, you know, a fulfilling experience, I guess you could say. You know, when you're helping, when you're doing something, you're helping people. Uh, I, absolutely. You know, that, uh, that was really a highlight. Even though it was a, a, a bad situation, it was actually a highlight uh, personally for me to be able to do that. So, you know, again... Um, 
just just a lot of a lot of stuff this year you know family wise um you know it's it's just been it's been crazy <laughs> i don't know how, you know the way of putting it it has things just been crazy um but yeah you know it's for us you know like i said when the first part of the year whenever you you had your surgery and stuff when you had to you know have some time away i mean you know we we still you know we still kept up with our podcast we still done everything we needed to do um that's one thing that i think that a lot of people get lost on is you know things get you know time gets tight things get tough and we preach all the time about you know there's you know x amount of minutes in a day you know you get to get things done you know we we never miss a beat we regardless we always stick to our we stick to our schedule we stick to what mm-hmm. we say we're going to do and we do it and i think that gets lost on a lot of people a lot of people don't follow through on that you, know, you make a plan stick to it well when you think you know, about it you know I, I didn't realize this but they they that this general rule is on podcasts that said is most of them died or if they're going to die they're going to die around the eighth episode Right, and I think if if there's something I could pass along as a teaching method or a teaching teachable moment to everybody, I, and I didn't, don't care what you're doing, it you know it could be uh, this could be you know, you know if you're trying to get better at table tennis, yeah, is it's a process. If this is a marathon; it's not a sprint. That's right. You, you know if, if if it was easy, everybody would do it. And that's one thing I try to teach my son at 12 years old is he gets very upset sometimes, you know, well, I can't do this right the first time. Well, there's a reason for that. Right. But, you know, whatever, you, whatever y'all are doing, you know, if, if, if you're a jet mechanic, if you're a doctor, if you're a martial artist, if you're a police officer, whatever, you know, be better than yet tomorrow than you were today. And, you know, realize that what you're doing if, if you make it a job, you're going to be miserable. That's right. If you make it a job, you're going to be miserable it, 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 because you are trading whatever you're doing. And you've heard me say this in our, in our, in our seminars and our courses and especially in class is whatever you're doing right now, you're trading them. You're trading minutes and seconds of your life that you're never going to get back. Mm-hmm. Don't waste that. That's right. And that's what I'm looking at because, you know, whether or not we've got three subscribers or, or three hundred thousand, no, number one, I enjoy this. Yeah, I, I do too. It's it's and, a fulfilling and, part of my week. <laughs> you know, so I'm gonna, you know, my pledge to all the listeners is is whether or not there's three of you or, or, or thirty thousand, I'm not I'm not gonna give you slop. I'm gonna do the best I can. Yeah, and I'm gonna get better. And 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 you know, I'll I'll look forward to y'all riding along with us on that. And that's another, th- you know, one of the things as far as content goes for us, you know, is we'll have a we'll have a a topic, yeah, you know, we'll, we we we'll kind of we'll we'll jump off to we'll, we'll sidetrack every now and then on a few things, but we always try we always bring it back in the end and tie it up. Um, but you know, it's we don't come in trying to talk over anybody's head. Uh, we don't come in trying to just shoot a, a bunch of smoke. We'll come in and say one exactly how we feel about something. And why? Oh, it's not that's just, going to get interested in here in a minute. It's just not because it's not just okay. This is this, this is what we say, and this is it. You know, this is why we feel this way. You know, and we, you know, it, and a lot of it comes from experiences. And you know, so we we, we feel like, well, I feel like I don't want to be speaking for you. I feel like, well, you know, what the content and the way we deliver it to people is honest. It's uh, it may it's not polished. It's not you know, we're not professional broadcasters, nor do we want to be professional broadcasters. Um, you know, so what we're, we're giving to people is, it, it's just real. It's just coming well, straight it, from it. It's like, if you sit down at the table and talk with us, this is exactly how you'd get it. Well, well but Glenn, there, it, but you're in, and I'm glad to hear you say that because step outside of the podcast about what I've, what I've always drilled home to y'all about teaching martial arts or, or self-protection or whatever you're teaching. Mm-hmm is you can take somebody that knows nothing about what you're talking about or what you're doing mm-hmm. and they can smell a fault. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, all of you think about something, it doesn't matter. I mean, it could be martial arts or whatever, but you can tell when somebody's full of shit. Yeah. And you don't want to be that guy. Nope. He teach what you know, do what you do, what you're good at. Yep. And, and be honest if you don't know something. Right. And you know what I mean? And that's, and that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But but be real about it. Yeah. 
And, you know, I've, I have, that is my, you know, and some people say stay in your lane and, that, and that's true. But that's one thing I've always hammered home to y'all is, you know, if you, you know, don't, don't step into something that you don't know if you're not comfortable about it, because the minute you do, somebody's going to know. I mean, how many times have men, you know, I, and, and I've done this to Glenn before. We'll pick him. I pick him up on the Tuesday night. Let's, let's go. Let's go for a ride. We'll walk into another another dojo and act like we don't know anything about what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Just to and see. We, we we saw some pretty interesting things. We saw some very interesting things. <laughs> you know, but the lesson in that is is you never know who's watching or listening. That's right. I mean, for all we know, we're talking about security topics, and, and they're and, and you know. You know, God knows who's listening to us. Yeah. So you you better be on your on your A game when you're talking about something. Yeah. So that's, you can that's put not, it out there in the public, in the public right. forum. Yeah. Yeah, because you know it, it don't go away. Yeah. And you know, so that's my that's my thing right there is, is especially in the martial arts world. You know, everybody's got an opinion, but you know, well, ninety five percent of the fights go to the ground. All right. Okay. Well, we've been over that ad nauseum, and I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say it again. You know, <laughs> bullshit. But uh, but uh, that's right. You know, it, it's just if you say something, be prepared to defend it. Exactly. That's it. Don't you know? If, if anything you say, you better be able to defend. You better be able to explain it. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not saying prove it. You know, no, yeah. I'm, I'm going to get into that later next year. Is about words. You know. Well, this proves this because I'm listening to a podcast now. It's, it's got the words "gray man" in it, which is bullshit. And he constantly uses the word "this," the phrase "this proves." Mm. No, 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 no. I want to reprogram the way a lot of you think about that word, because when I say "this proves something," that means it ceases all debate. Yeah. If you ever go to graduate school, yeah, that's one way to get your ass kicked out of there is use that word. Trust me. But, uh, yeah, speaking of words, year. speaking of words, another, you know, another thing you jumped into this year was the, the, the blog, the Ministry of Defense blog. Um, you know, for any of you guys that haven't went out there and checked out the, the blog, it's uh, ministryofdefense.us slash blog or on the website. There is a link to it. I also put a link to it in the body of the uh, the description on the YouTube channel, the YouTube videos. But please check it out because you know he's written some good stuff up there. I'm gonna um, change it up next year. You know, I've kind of, I've kind of took a little bit of a step back over the last couple months because I'm gonna be honest with you. Just from a writer, I didn't like the way it was going, and that's my fault. But I think next year I'm gonna I'm gonna strictly stick to a lot of things that are security and safety related. Uh, I kind of felt myself going back into the role of like an instructor of, of, you know, point the finger to the moon, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and that's not really the way I want to go with this. Yeah. I, I want people to walk away from something that they can use. Yeah. And I think, and that's where I'm going to be going with it next year is I'm going to go back and because for all of you guys and, and, and gals out there in, in, police and security we're in the golden age of security now trust me we're in the golden age now and and martial arts you know you know glenn you know on my on my other teaching side you know this on my solo stuff you can back me up on this two years ago people said you can't make it just teaching private lessons (laughs) you look at 2020 Uh it's the only way you can do it yeah yeah now who's laughing (laughs) that's right yeah. These guys, these big fancy dojos that, that hold you know 150 people at a time, uh, couldn't hold anybody at the time. And that's, exactly. It, it, you know, the, I mean these these guys could teach a class in a freaking porta john. You know. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, and, and you know we and we have an acquaintance that I spoke with recently who has a pretty good sized dojo, and they lost two thirds of their students. You know, once everything once they could finally open back up. Um, you know, only a really a less than a third of their students came back because you know for it's for different reasons. Maybe make people financially because of maybe they lost a job or was laid off or you know during all the this stuff or you know they're just you know scared you know for being that close of contact with somebody. I don't know, but um, 
Um, there's actually a couple schools I've I've heard about that. Uh, yeah, when they opened their doors back up, they had a really tough time, you know, trying to get the people back in the doors. I'd be interested in hearing from a lot of uh, any of you guys out there that are doing BJJ. Yeah. Uh, I'd be interested in seeing, and, and if y'all will, just reach out to us, email us, or, or in the comments or whatever. Yeah. Let us know how you're doing as far as, you know, attendance. Yeah. You know. And there's people out there that just don't care. They'll get in a role. It don't make a difference to them. Well, but but as, as a whole, you know, you, especially you got schools, uh, the larger schools where they deal with a lot of, with kids, school-age kids, and, you know, their parents, you know, how their parents feel about them being in there, you know. So I, I've seen that really kind of you know, hit them I where just, it hurts. You know, from so. a martial artist perspective, I don't care what the art is. I don't care if, you know, if it's, you know, if, if it's pangolin kung fu, if it's, uh, you know. You like that pangolin you know, word, don't you? You darn skippy. We're going to get us a pet, we're gonna get some pet pangolin and have it here on the table. Darn skippy. <laughs> you know, it looks like a, a on a freaking, leash. Yeah, it, looks like, it looks like an armadillo with like some kind of skin disease. Yeah, but, it's, uh, it's a freaky beast. But, you know, BJJ, karate, I, I don't want to see any martial art suffer. No, no. I, I don't care what it is. I mean, because that's knowledge. Yeah. That makes somebody's life better. That gives joy to somebody's life. And, it, you know, and I don't care what it is. It, it, it's, it's a skill that could possibly one day save the life. That's right. I don't want to see any of these schools go away. And I'm... I'm, I'm very concerned that that's going to happen. So if any of you out there are trained in BJJ, but again, the reason I, I point that out is because you can't social distance doing that. That's right. You know, I can teach karate in a park. Yeah. You know, but, you know, it's a little bit hard, you know, you know, from my, my perspective to, to get the nuances of that art without actually having to touch another human being. Yeah. That would be, that would be difficult. You know, so, but, so in the spirit of Festivus, <laughs> I love it. Festivus. Now we we we've got the good parts out of the way. Uh huh. Uh, I'll let you go first because mm. I've got four, possibly five. No, air, air my grievances. And, and, and as a as a you know, mm. I'm gonna go ahead and let all of y'all know if you've been listening any amount of time. A couple of these are political because, yeah. You know, some of this chaps my balls. <laughs> I'm sure it does. So, <laughs> but I'm gonna let Glenn go first. I'm gonna, you know, you know, age before beauty. I guess so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Even man. though I'm older. Oh man. <laughs> anyway, I get you know, I, I don't have a huge list. My my biggest my biggest grievance this year has been with the way. Um, our leadership in the state of North Carolina, where we are at, located, has handled this whole <laughs> pandemic thing. Uh, you knew I was probably going here. I knew it. I, I was sitting um, there. There's, you know, again, I'm the type of person that I question things. I question things, and I don't, I don't care who's telling me. I want to question it. I mean, for years, you know, it, it, I, I, when we, you and I started training together, and you're showing me a technique. The first thing I would ask is, "What's the counter?" I ask questions. I don't, I don't want to know just that. I want to know every every angle on this thing, and it's just like with with the the coronavirus. You know, no one. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist, but I understand the basics of of human health. I mean, I have friends who are MDs. I've studied the body for you know about all my life, especially for the last thirty years, and you know how to stay healthy and do things and how things function and operate. You know, and the way things were done have been done this whole time. It's like lockdowns. Probably my biggest grievance has been the lockdown stuff. And the reason being is because we've had all these lockdowns and it hasn't done anything. It hasn't made a difference. In fact, the more lockdowns, the more mandates, the 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 the, the worse things have gotten. Well, my um, cousin just got out of intensive care with COVID. You know, it, it, but but I don't think a lockdown would have done anything for him. It wouldn't have. You know, and, and that's that's been the thing. In fact, um, I was talking with a couple here recently. I know right now I'm I'm sitting at about thirty people. I know that that had. In fact, my daughter's best friend's mom has it at the moment. Now she's got a little bit of a headache, uh, and she had like a, sl- a low grade temperature, and she's in her late forties. Um, but none of the kids in the house have had it. Um, and so I, it's one of these things. You know, we, we're, is it contagious? Yeah, but a lot of things are contagious, um, and it affects everybody so differently. But it has a 99.99%, you know, survival rate. You get better. You know, that small percentage of people that don't, 
majority of are people that are older that have weak immune systems. They just can't fight, you know, it, it, whether they've got COVID or they got the flu or they got, you know, they got the common cold, their bodies just aren't in, in a position to fight things off. Now, the difference between COVID is, you know, it, it, it causes, it ramps up other things in the body. There's autoimmune effects in the body with inflammation and stuff like that, which lead, if you've got diabetes, you got things like that, it causes other problems. Again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but knowing people now, over, over this, you know, this eight, nine months, knowing people now have, have been involved with this, and the ones that I know that have, 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 it has had an effect on, yeah, they had other crap going on. I personally don't know anybody healthy that's been in the hospital with this. I personally, and I know a handful of people have been in the hospital. One individual was in there for 22 days. Mm -hmm. um, and he's in his late 60s. He's a diabetic. He got, he, he's got a handful of other issues. Um, and I actually spoke with him last week. And he's actually walking with a cane now because he was on his back for so long. And because of his age, he had muscle, a lot of muscle atrophy. And he, he basically got bedridden. He got bedridden. And he basically had to relearn how to walk. I mean, he had to get back into uh, – because he had diabetes and the inflammation – he wasn't sick as far as he wasn't on a ventilator. He wasn't breathing issues. He, his feet, he had problems with his feet because the inflammation, the way the, the, way the, the, the body reacts to this stuff, um, it affected it, 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 and because he had diabetes, it affected, he couldn't get on his feet. So he was off his feet for 22 days. And so he had to go spend another six weeks doing rehab to get himself walking again, to build his muscles back up. Um, his wife had it. She went to the hospital, but she never had trouble breathing. She didn't have no energy. She basically just couldn't get out of the bed. She wasn't didn't feel bad. She just she just literally was weak. So it affects so many people in so many different ways. But you know, it wasn't that it was you know causing her to go into some type of cardiac arrest. It wasn't called you know, it's it's just people that are older. You know, it, it gets them down a lot more. Now, don't get me wrong. There's people, younger people that have gotten sick, but. I really have a hard time believing that these people that get the younger people that get really sick with it don't have other things going on that you just don't know about. Um, but so anyway, I, I don't get off of that path. But the way things have been handled um, with the lockdowns, the way the, you know they've just basically ruined tens of thousands. I would say more lives have been ruined um, from job loss, not be able to pay the rent, not be able to get the groceries. Um, and just, you know, ruination like that, then to me, have been people, you know, dying from it. And, I, and I'm not trying to be morbid. I'm not trying to sound like I don't care. I do care. Anybody that dies, that's, that's horrifying. It's horrible. I mean, I had a death in the family uh, right before Christmas, but, you know, it was cancer related. You know, so, you know, we're not shutting down. You know, there's a lot more people going to die this year of cancer than of COVID. But, you know, we're not, the world's not shutting down until we find a cure for cancer. And you have no idea where that's, when that's coming or not. You, know, you don't have a, well, you, know. you know, so you, you can't, you can't really prepare for that. And, uh, so it's just the way things have been handled, I think have been handled wrong. You don't take a bunch of really healthy people and lock them away and think everything's going to be okay. You protect the people that are vulnerable and everybody else kind of go about their business and take, you know, you be, be precautionary with the people that are vulnerable, but you go, you go get your business done. And I think mm -hmm. that's been a problem. That's just my opinion. You know, and again, not a doctor, not a scientist, but looking from the outside, looking in, that's been a that's been a pain in my ass. That that chat my balls. Okay, so <laughs> to to quote Corbett, um, again the second thing this year, I guess the biggest thing, it, what I've uh, well, uh, two things. One thing for people's reaction to this stuff. You know the gut now, the way the government handles it's one thing, but the people not questioning those that are telling them what to do. People just kind of falling over to the side and taking it up the butt and doing whatever they're told to do. You know, um, just, okay, it's taken it at face value. This person, they, they must know what they're doing because they talk, you know, they're a professional. And I'm doing air quotes, they're a professional. Um, and I'm going to tell you what, the professionals get a lot of stuff wrong. And I've seen this year, and I've, and I've kept videotape. I've got hours and hours of video. People want to get they want to get their screen time and get on TV and tell how things are supposed to be. And then six months later, you say how wrong they were and how they changed their tune multiple times. So when you listen to the professionals, it's not always that's not always the last word. Question what they're saying. Question why they're saying it. You know, it's like go to the doctor. If you get a bad diagnosis, it's, it's it, I, I would say it's always best to get a second opinion. Uh, you know, you might not get the same same response from from another entity. So, um, you know, it's always good to know. And, and 
you know, because a lot of these people aren't being transparent about things. A lot of, there's been zero transparency on a lot of this stuff. So it's good to question it. You know, so the, so the response of the people to how these things have been handled is also a, a grievance of mine because people, you know, the, the sheep, you know, just kind of go along to get along, um, you know, because that's why they, they tell me that's what the best thing to do is. Well, okay, well, research it a little bit for yourself. Kind of go around them and see what's, you know, behind door one, two, and three and make a decision for yourself and see if that's what's best for you. I don't need, you know, I've got a dad. Um, I'm 47 years old, and I have my dad, and my dad gives me advice. I listen to him, but I make my own decisions, and he doesn't control what I do. You know, so I don't need somebody being, I don't need the, the, the government being my parent telling me what I should do and just expect me to go along with it. So that's number two. Number three is this whole thing with ammunition shit this year. Oh, <laughs> and, Jesus and these and, and, and the gun sales and, the, and, and what we've been seeing with the stores and the resellers and the vendors out there that have been screwing people. Now, there's been record, record um, firearm sales this year. And with good reason. If anybody watched the news back through the summertime with all the violence and craziness going on around us, then uh, you would know and understand why people want to buy a gun. Um, but I forgot it was how many millions of new, it's like 10 million new firearm owners this year. Well, the last, actually, the last to the hats I saw that the FBI, and this was a couple weeks ago that I saw this, they said there were 42 million okay, background 42 checks. Million. Okay, so let's just say, let's say all 42 million of them all bought one firearm. That's 42 million extra people buying ammunition. So, yeah, so it makes it more difficult for the, the manufacturers to keep up. Well, Glenn, there's an important point you need to take about that, and you're right on this, but I want you to think about something. Okay. Is... If you've got 40, uh, let's just assume that part of that 42 million is going to be people like me and you. Okay. We already own guns. Right. So let's just say that there's 10 million new gun owners. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you've got another 32 million who are like me and you that already own guns. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would be interested in knowing how somebody like Joe Biden, uh, Joe Biden or Kamala Harris <laughs> is, uh, you're going to come along. In in a in a few short weeks, few in a few short months, whatever the case may be, and you're either going to a severely restrict the ownership of these weapons, mm -hmm. b if you believe what some people are saying about Joe Biden, he's going to tax these things as far as like, you know, if you own an AK, an AR, or or a thirty round magazine, I'm I'm looking at two of them right now on my on my on my workbench here in my in my jihad room. Mm -hmm. $200 a piece. Yeah. Who in their right mind is going to tell the government that you own this? No, or C. I dumped them in, I, 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 I threw them in the garbage. They wasn't no, worth $200 I, a piece to me. I, I sold mine to some, some illegal immigrants that was getting on a bus <laughs> going to Laredo, Texas. Oh, God. You know, prove I didn't. But, but And, or C, they're going to outright come and seize them. Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to tell me that you, you know, you got, I mean, I'm speaking to federal law enforcement. You know, it took y'all damn 10 years to find Eric Rudolph in the mountains of North Carolina. Hmm. It took you that long to find Osama bin Laden, the most wanted man on the planet. Hmm. And you're going to sit there with a straight face and look at me and tell me that you're going to go seize over 300 million firearms. Yeah, piss off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, yeah. you couldn't have a seizure, much less seize anything. Yeah. But, yeah, so... You're right, but the grievance has been with these uh, with the resellers where they're you know they're getting this ammunition now. I can go online right now, and you can find bulk ammo sales, bulk ammo. You know, you need to buy a thousand rounds. Well, they're charging outrageous amounts for this bulk ammo purchases. So then what they'll do is they'll break out some of the smaller, you know, twenty round boxes, things like it, and they're charging double. To I'm seeing I've seen three times what it was. You know, it cost three months ago, mm -hmm. six months ago. And they're just gouging people. Now, talking with someone that actually works for one of the manufacturers, um, they've not changed their pricing to these to these wholesalers uh, and to these vendors. So, so the vendors that that, that are selling to the end user, uh, they're screwing everybody. And, exactly and, right. And they're and I'm not going to name the company's name, but they're they're down in Texas, and the the Texas AG um, I th has finally I think come to them and bringing up uh, stuff to them about price gouging. 
Thank God. You know, we were having a conversation about this company uh, before we got on today. And yeah, call that broke one off of me. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and I'm glad. I'm glad somebody's stepping up and saying something because they're just doing people wrong. They're taking advantage, you know, and they all get it while you can, get it while you can. You know, maybe he'll come and do something that maybe he won't. But, you know, there's no reason to do people dirt because the, you know, the supply is there. It's just because, you know, it's, it's tougher to get stuff out because so many more people want it now, supply and demand. But at the same time, you know, that's eventually going to phase out. You know, people are going to buy what they need, and then and they'll, kind of, they'll kind of smooth on out. So, then they'll say, okay, well, the price will go back down. Well, the price should never went up. It, you're not paying any more for it. You know, the, again, the manufacturers haven't changed their pricing. But the, end, the the vendors have really nailed it to the end users like you and you and me. So that's my third grievance this year is how people in, in, in taking advantage of a situation, you know, to take advantage of people that, you know, for instance, you know, I like going to smaller local gun stores. Um, I bought stuff online, but I prefer going to local gun stores because, one, you usually get it at a better price. And I like having that FaceTime with the people I'm buying from. I like I like having a, a relationship. Um, and... Uh, there's a couple of local vendors that have have been taking advantage of people, not just the big online stores, but there's mm-hmm. there's quite a few. But anyway, that was my third grievance, and I'm gonna stop it there because if not, I'll keep going all night. But uh, so now, let's uh, oh God. let's see what see what you got for me. All right, well, one of these is gonna come to no surprise from you. Uh, <clears throat> and again, if you try to put me in a political box. For those of you who are listening, especially if you're listening for the first time, if you try to put me in a box politically, you're you'll lose. You're gonna lose <laughs> because I, I'll, I'll man, it's Christmas time. It's about to be the new year. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll let some of y'all hook. I'll tell you a little bit about what I believe. Um, I'm kind of all over the place. I, I do, you know, small government. Well, whatever that means. You know, the thing about small government, Glenn, is by any, you know, Adolf Hitler was small government. Mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Midget, midget government. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, there was one dude. Yeah. I mean, so damn, be careful what you're asking for. Yeah. Uh, you know, King George, you know, back a few years ago, about 1776, that was small government. Yeah. But on the on the flip side of that is when you get these these behemoth governments like the Politburo, uh, you know, over over Moscow. That's that's another set of issues. Yeah, I'm more along the lines of. I'm not sure. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go ahead and say this: is I don't think the system of government that we have was what was originally intended. And I don't think it is any longer viable. I don't think it can work. Simply because you have too many competing interests. Yeah. Which is going to get me into my first grievance here in about about two seconds. I want okay. you to just keep that in mind. Okay. Is what is happening today, if you and I did that or any of our listeners did what our government in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. is doing We'd be in Guantanamo Bay being waterboarded with kerosene. Mm. No question about it. So my first grievance, and some of you are not going to like this, but I, I'm, but hear me out, please. Donald Trump. I I'm not, I, I, I was, I was not a, <laughs> I was not a supporter of Trump to a, to a, to a certain mm-hmm. degree. I damn sure am not a supporter of Joe Biden and that lunatic he's running with. Right. And, and that's hard to, for some people to grasp because it was, they, they automatically, it, it's, a, it's, it's a zero-sum game. Hmm. Well, if you're not on this side of the fence, you've got to be on the other side. No, 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 no. That's not the way this works. My problem with Trump is he said the things... For example, I will say this. My politics is based on the concept of nationalism. A nation. Mm -hmm. A nation does not, is not sociologically defined 
by government. A, a nation is defined by the people within the confines of a given area. You know, you get a lot of these people talk about, well, there's historically no borders. The problem with that is technically that's true. Because if you go back even into, into biblical scripture, a lot of those territories were defined by where these people lived. If you go back and look at a lot of those times back, I'm, I'm talking way, way back, a lot of that is actually pretty accurate. You go and look throughout Europe to where a lot of these traditional people lived, you know, the Vikings, you know, the Hessians, whatever the case may be, and you can even go back further than that, uh, uh, you know, down in the Balkans. You had groups of people who had a common culture, who had common things in common, values, norms, beliefs, religion, customs, uh, ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. We no longer have that here. True. And so when Trump come along in 2016, and he, he could not come out and say, I'm a nationalist. He couldn't say that. I mean, for God's sakes, they already called him a Nazi, and, and half of these people don't even know what a Nazi is. I mean, I'm called, you know. You call you know, a lot I, of things. <laughs> yeah, I'm called a lot of things. People have called me a communist and a Nazi. Well, come on, man, pick one. Oh, Lord. I'm neither. The problem I have with Trump, I'm going to get to the point here, is we're going to drain the swamp. The only thing he did was change the water in the damn thing. <laughs> you know, you're going to drain the swamp, but you're going to turn around and hire somebody like James Mattis. And I know he, for you Marines out there, I can already see the hair standing up on the back of your neck, and and I'm here the snort and everything right now. James Mattis is a dickhead. James Mattis, if you've if you've ever been in the military or served around those types of people, you don't get to that level of of leadership if that's what you want to call it without being two things a politician and an ass kisser mm. that's it so what does he do let's go back through the four years where he told us I'm going to drain the swamp I'm going to make America great again I'm going to stop these wars okay let's 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 just lay it out here Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions single-handedly destroyed the Trump presidency. He had the opportunity to stop that Russia investigation on his track. Everybody knew it was, it was bullshit. Yeah. You know, if you really are going to be honest about this, it was bullshit. He recused himself, and when he did that, it was off to the races. And look what he put this country through for four years. Yeah. Trump could not have passed a barking dog ordinance from then on without accused of being a puppet of, 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 Vladimir, of Vladimir Putin. Yeah. Let's just be honest about it. So we get past that. And now we have that. Well, well we don't anymore. But we had that buffoon Bill Barr. Mm-hmm. Not going to go down too far down that rabbit hole, but if some of you are interested, go and do a little bit of, of due diligence and background on, 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 on the Honorable William Barr. Okay? The FBI. Hmm. He comes in, and what does he do? He keeps James Comey, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, big mistake. Okay. <laughs> now, now what, no, 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 no. It was not a, it was not a mistake. Yeah, don't 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 kid yourself into believing that was a mistake. Because keeping him he, was, keeping him wasn't a mistake. It was not a mistake because it was done intentionally. That's my point. Oh, okay. You know, why would you, if 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 God forbid, I was elected president of the United States? Because I promise you, mm, things would change. Yeah, no. <laughs> You know, Washington will be on fire in about well, well, probably about 33 minutes. But you've got somebody you know that is a snake, 
that has ties to your political enemies, mm-hmm. and you're going to leave them in power. Yeah, that's why I said it was stupid. <laughs> well, no, it's not stupid. It was it was it was it was tantamount to gross negligence. Mm. Okay, and then we had the James Mattis, mm. where the problem with this, Glenn, is people don't think you're going to we're going to make America great again. We're going to rebuild the military. Well, why are you rebuilding the military if you're going to stop all the wars? That that that's like building the the world's fastest car and saying I'm not ever going to put it on a racetrack. I guess it's the those adages peace through superior po- firepower. Okay, well that's that's the point though. Is sooner or later with people like James Mattis, they want to use that power. They're going to use it. Yeah, and be damned if they didn't. We've got freaking troops in Africa. Yeah, we've got troops and and they're in, in Syria. Mm-hmm. We have troops we're everywhere. Still in, we're still in Afghanistan. Yep. And now they're poking China and Russia. And the, and the whole time they're promoting all this bull crap. You know, for God's sakes, we got freaking Green Berets and Navy SEALs who are getting Brazilian waxes and putting on their lipstick. Yeah. Okay, I, I've got a, uh, that, that really right now to the point with Trump, and now all of a sudden we've got this debacle here, is the election was rigged. Mm-hmm. Well, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> the right was on that wall way yeah, before, yeah. back in the spring. You know, no shit, Sherlock. Anybody who's sitting there and just even looking at the evidence from afar, you can see is something, even if you don't believe it was rigged, there's ample evidence to look at this and say it was flawed. We need we need to look at this. Yeah. We need to we need to slow pump the brakes and look at this. My point on that is is Bubba, if you've got something, you need to spill it. Yeah. Because I told a couple of y'all the other day, and I mean this, the only way that man stays in the White House is if he seizes power. Yeah. That is the only way. This 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 show's done. Yeah. I agree. Because, you know, I, I, I'm going to let that one go because I've, I'm feeling my blood pressure rising. The only thing Donald Trump did was change the water in the swamp. Hmm. It's still there. Yeah, it's still I, there. I agree. He he didn't do what he should have done from the get go. You know, my second one, and this one all ties in together. Well, I'm gonna bust them up just because one of them. I'm just gonna take a part and shot at somebody just because I really hope to provoke a response from them. Okay. This business in our in our society of woke culture. Oof. Yeah. I used to be a pretty avid sports fan. You know, I went to the University of Alabama for one of my degrees, you know, roll tide. I've been to many games, and it doesn't matter what you, you know, if you're a Michigan fan, Notre Dame, a lot of that goes into a, a, a belief system, a culture. You have something in common with these folks. Yeah. The, the history, the tradition of it. I wouldn't set foot in that stadium again if the cheerleaders were nude and they paid me to go. Yeah. They've ruined sports for me. There and I've said this, and uh, you can you can pull the footage up and if anybody says, Oh, he's being racist. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Hear me out. I have said repeatedly that what happened to George Floyd was wrong. Have I not? Oh, absolutely. We, 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 we've discussed that at nauseum and, and both agree. There's, there's nobody that can look at that <clears throat> and justify what that police officer did to that man and not look at it just from a basic perspective of human decency. What you did to that man was wrong. And he deserves whatever he gets, whatever the law of, of, of the state of Minnesota will allow. Mm-hmm. That is where we go with that. But you could see this coming. Mm-hmm. You know, we now have them renaming, like at the University of Alabama, they had things that they were renaming that go back to the Civil War. Well, this person had a tie to the Confederacy. Uh, well, by that standard, so do I. 
I had eight ancestors that fought in the Civil War. Seven of them fought for the Confederacy. One of them fought for the Union. So does that mean that I should be stripped of any uh, credibility or anything in society? If you're going to go that far? For something that happened 150 years ago? Yeah. You know, in North Carolina, we we grew up, this is NASCAR country. Mm -hmm. And you've had one person I'm not going to mention his name. Y'all know who it is. That made some comments that were debunked by the FBI. That if you've ever spent any time in, around any race shop, any garage, you know this was it, it was just much ado about nothing. But now you've got one person that has changed the culture of that sport, and he has never won a stinking race. Hmm. So what's happened is you've taken a tragedy and you capitalized on it. Yeah. You know, whether or not you want to, you know, they, they accuse conservatives. I'm not a conservative, but they'll accuse people from our side on the right. And I am, I'm, I'll, I'll say it, I am ultra, ultra right. You know, it was opportunistic. Well, what did you do? You know, who who really pissed on this man's grave? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the reason coming back to what I was talking about with Donald Trump about are we even a nation? Because if you stop and think about it, Glenn, I'll ask you a question. And this is no slander. This is no disrespect to anybody. But what exactly do you have in common with someone from, I don't know, uh, New York City? Are the interest and the things that are that are what's best for the folks of New York City, whether that be politically, socially, economically, whatever, do they align with what is best for you and your family and your community here in North Carolina? No. They do not. And that's not right, wrong, or indifferent. That's just stating a fact. That's correct. Now, culturally... You know, if you've never been to New York, it's great. It's fun. It's cool. You learn a lot there. Boston, fantastic. Beautiful place. You know, I'm fortunate. I've Out of the 50 states, I've only got to see four more of them, and I've seen them all. I am highly, highly blessed. But I've been to these places, and it's neat to look at, but it's not my home. It's Those are not my people, even though we're all, quote, unquote, Americans. Right. So explain to me then when you come back and you look at like what's going on now where you've got people literally that can't pay their rent, that can't buy medicine, that can't buy food, that can't pay their electric bill because of these lockdowns you spoke of. And you've got turtle face Mitch McConnell just making this a political football because people need that money. If that makes me a socialist, then damn it, I'm a socialist. Yeah, no, you're right. But these people need help and you're playing, you're playing politics with it. But at the same time, if you go deeper into the way the federal government spends money, this is my big grievance this year, is why should any and take a listener out there, wherever you may live, why should your federal tax dollars go to do something in my community that is not going to benefit you at all? That's right. That's not the way this, this system was designed to work. <laughs> The whole thing, my grievance is, is it's broken. The only thing 2020 did is it just pulled back the covers and let you see how broken it was. Yeah. My yes. final grievance. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm very, very disappointed in our law enforcement apparatus throughout this country. I'm, ex I'm not going to say I'm angry. I don't hate you. I don't. I'm disappointed in you because you have allowed corruption to flourish. You have allowed certain aspects of a culture in that profession, and I can say this because I lived in it, that everybody knew was there, 
but now all of a sudden it's a problem because uh oh he got put on on worldwide tv but now all of a sudden also w alongside this is to try to make that better you've allowed groups like antifa to run loose like maniacs for example i read an article today that so i think is somewhere up i want to say it's tacoma washington mm-hmm a, a group of those derelicts went into this ma this person's hotel, rented a room for the night, and now they won't leave. And the police are trying to find a way, and this is quoting one of the police uh, police uh, leadership, we want to find a way that is not law enforcement related to resolve this. <laughs> Good I'm, luck. Not, I'm, not, I'm not kidding you. Those, those are not my words. They're, they're his. Dude, so that is basically so what you've stupid. done is you've allowed a group of hoodlums of, of DNA rejects. I don't care what you, you don't like that. I don't give a damn. Find me. You know, and we've, you know how I feel about it. Antifa. Oh, I know you want, you got a grievance. I'll listen to the grievance. And trust me, I, I've got plenty of them. So, you know, you ain't the Lone Ranger, any of you guys in Antifa. The problem with it is, is you think you're scaring people. But you're going into the places you know where they're, you know. People won't fight back or yeah, exactly. very little resistance. Let me give you a little example. Where I live, a lot of the deer stands are facing the road. Yeah. Let that sink in. But it should not come to that. Because we have entrusted certain individuals in our community, meaning our law enforcement apparatus, to do these things in our name and on our behalf so that it does not come to that. You know, you've got the FBI. Where are you at with this? You know, you've, you've got the FBI that by any standard... Any legal standard, you cannot look at these groups and say, number one, it's not related to terrorism, sedition, and where are you on the RICO statutes? Because there's oh, yeah. money crossing. Yeah, oh, where, yeah. Are you, where are you at on this? But then you'll have the ATF going into some going into gun shops, like there's one out uh, somewhere out west. I forgot where it was. It was a, like a polymer gun shop. You've got those guys doing that. Yeah. And you've got these idiots out here burning entire cities down. Yeah. And then you've got city police departments that are standing by watching it happen. Yep, and not doing a thing. Yeah, I, I've got a problem with you. Yeah. I share your um, lift of grievances. I just didn't point those out. That's uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I get thinking about it. every grievance you shared. Us, uh, I'm I'm right on board with you. But you know, Antifa. Um, you know, believe it or not, some of the things they say, especially about the government, I don't agree with their end results or what they're seeking. I don't agree with their tactics. But some of the things you have to look at what they're saying about the current government and say, you know, yeah, they've got a point. You got to be fair about this. Yeah. But... I'm going to leave you with this. It's interesting to me that you can take a group that's supposedly peaceful protesters and they can mobilize faster than the 82nd Airborne. Social media. No, 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 no. Because you, you, when you look at this, you go on Twitter, you go on Instagram, you go on Facebook, and you find how many actual official air fingers quotes yeah. Oh, yeah. Sites there are related to Antifa. Yeah, it's because they're well funded. Right. If they weren't well funded, they they wouldn't take the they take their time the way they're doing it. So then it comes back to the question of who will who what when where and how where and how right mm -hmm. those 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 basic investigatory questions. Yeah. But you got a group right there who can mobilize literally faster than the 82nd Airborne and the Marines combined. And be anywhere in the, in the United States within hours of something happening. 
and you're going to sit there and expect me to believe that our law enforcement officials at the state, local, and federal level don't know this? Yeah, horse bucky. You you should be, every one of you, if, if this comes out in the future to be true, you should be arrested and imprisoned, every last one of you. Because what you're doing is, you know, when I, when I joined the military, when I became a court official, I took an oath. I've still got my, my certificate when I became a court official. that I swore to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of North Carolina. No. Are you doing that? Right. Because inherent in that oath is each person that you come in contact with, it doesn't matter if it's a person that's saying good morning to you or if it's a person you're arresting for the most heinous crime imaginable. That person has a right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness until they lose their rights because they've committed a crime and been adjudicated guilty. Yeah. Are you doing that? And the answer to that is no. A big no. Yeah, I... I'm right on board with you on every one of those, man. That those are that's a good list. It, it not only it not only was a good list, you articulated your grievances very well. And, you know, you know, and Trump. <coughs> I, I'm 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 not about. I didn't vote. I well, I wouldn't vote for Biden. You know, if he was running against a dead dog. The guy, he's he. I mean, he's a, he's an idiot. Yeah. I, I, I mean, definitely I mean, not behind him at all. Take away. I'm not making fun of the man because of his age or his, or his, or his <clears throat> diminished mental capacity. I would never do that. That's wrong. But he's a jackass. Yeah. Go back and look at stuff from 30 years ago. He said, no take. Yes. Yeah. He, he's Kamala he's a, Harris. He's an ass. You look at what some of that, that, some of the things that woman did to young black men in California as a prosecutor mm -hmm. is absolutely terrifying. Absolutely terrifying what she did to young black people. Yeah, and some of the things you know, things that she said that she would like to accomplish have done is terrifying. Yes. So, but with Trump, the thing that really bothers me about that is it's almost like I had such high hopes, and it's almost like the way the best way I can feel, you know, I can express to the way our listeners the way I feel about this is it's almost like. I went to buy a Bentley, and I left in a Hyundai. <laughs> I got you. Good analogy. <laughs> and the Hyundai broke down. Yeah. But, you know, I'm at a point now with it. I know what's in front of us. You know, and they keep saying January 6th, we got a big surprise. Well, unless we're going to have some version of Crystal Knock, and, I, and you better hope that ain't it. Yeah. Uh. I swear to God, I hope that's not what it is, because if it is, I might be thinking about gathering my family up and leaving, because that never ends well. Right. But short of him seizing control of the government through martial law or what or other other he, he's gone. Yeah. Because if they had some type of legal proof that something something would have stuck to the wall by now, you know, you know, despite what you know, ass cracking believes. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just, let's just folks let you know let's let's accept things for as they are let's band together like-minded people and let's move along yeah that's a good list happy new year. Happy, happy happy festivus <laughs> oh, strange next oh but, uh, lord that, that, that's a great list man and uh, what i was what i hope you know we you know, if you guys out there have your list of grievances, or you know, even if things that that you found good for twenty twenty, if you got you know, pulled out of it good, um, leave there leave a comment. Uh, there was more good than there was bad, I believe. Yeah, for, personally, per, for personally, I think as a country as a whole, I think it was more bad. But you know, personally for me, I mean, I I guess it's all in the way how you handled handled your business, how you handled yourself, how you went about doing things. But if you guys out there, if you guys have grievances, things you want to share, please, you know, post them in the comments let, or email us. Let us know what you think. We'd love to hear it. Uh, we are looking forward to 2021, uh, trying to do something a little more with what we do here. You know, to kind of, you know, 
take our platform the way we do it and maybe add to that and may mix it up a little bit. Uh, again, we're still learning this. Even we're a year into this now, but we're still learning. We're still trying to get better at it um, and do maybe, you know, experiment with some things. So, um, you know, we appreciate everybody out there that, that's, that's checked us out, listened to it, comments with us, uh, sends us messages behind the scenes, uh, wants to work with us. You know, we, we, we appreciate that. I mean, it, it means a lot to us. So, you know, it, you know, it's not we're not looking for you know, uh, a reward from doing this, but that is a reward. Uh, it, it's it's justification for what we do. I second that. You know, everybody out there, you know, I'm just speaking on my behalf. It's, you know, it, it, it it's, it's truly humbling. And you take time out of your day to listen to us. Sometimes we get goofy. Sometimes we get angry. But um, it truly is. It's, it's a bond. Yeah. You know, and I, I just want to say, you know, Happy New Year to everybody. And, 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 you know, just from a human perspective, know that you're loved. Yep. Because we don't hear that enough. They know that you're loved, and and, and and there's at least two guys here that, that value who you are as people. Yep. I uh, couldn't say it better myself. So you guys, please, you know, just as, as a lot of you guys have, have started doing for us, you know, hitting that like, subscribe, notification bell, and, uh, you know, join in the conversation with us. Like we always say, that's sort of our end of the show tagline. And, uh, you know, please, you know, let us know what you think. And please be safe, and we will see you 2021. You Happy New Year. Happy, happy, happy festival. Woo-hoo! Come on, 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 on. Yeah, we're going to watch the ball drop. Uh, uh, nobody there. Yeah. Peace out.